Hey guys, welcome to Blender tutorial on using shape keys to do facial expressions. Here I've got a smile. That's what it looks like when it's fully uh, applied. But the great thing about shape keys is that you can apply them in stages or increments. Um, here I've got it applied 100%. I could set it to 0.5 like that. And it's more subtle then. You can do this with any shape key you want. And the great thing about shape keys is that they're really easy to make. And I'll show you how you do it. Armatures, which are these things, that's for moving bones. This is how I like to think of it. An armature is your bones, so anything like your arm moving, that's going to be your armature. But if you want to do fine things like facial expressions, use shape keys. Uh, but you probably already know that. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the eyebrows come together to make like a sort of frown. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, I'm going to take the smile off as in like zero. Before you start, make sure you go into the edit object properties here and make sure you press that because what you're going to have is you're going to have nothing here. So you need to click the add shape key to the object and that'll create a basis. That's your basis. Your basis is your default shape, so it's what's going to rest those. And you don't touch that. The only time you're going to touch that is if you want to modify your shape or your object. Like, say, I wanted to tweak the nose a little bit because I didn't like it, make it a bit longer or something. I'm going to do that while I've got basis selected. Okay, what you do next is you add a shape key. I'm going to call this one frown or I'm actually going to call it as eyebrows together. So, brows together. And I'm going to set this to 1 so that you can see it happening. And once I've done that, you can either do this through edit mode. But I don't like to use edit mode. The reason I don't like to use edit mode is because when you're in edit mode, um, even if you do have your X mirror switched on, sometimes it doesn't mirror mirrors there it mirrors there if I'd use sculptor on this it wouldn't mirror so you could use this but what's better to use if, if you've got like a sort of high poly model like this isn't high high poly this is semi high poly but it's still really annoying to model and change using the edit mode so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my sculpt mode and when you're in sculpt mode when it loads I'm going to well, first I'm going to turn off the hair because hair is laggy. Turn off subsurf, turn off hair. Subsurf as well. I could have left subsurf on, but I'm not going to because I want this to be as fast as possible, especially with Camtasia on. What I've got here is first you're going to make sure you've got your X mirror on or your Y mirror, depending which way you made the model. But mine mirrors in the X axis and. That brings me on to another thing. If you have a mirror modifier switched on, so if you used one for making your model, you're going to have to apply it before you apply any shape keys or if you add any shape keys because in order to apply your mirror modifier, which you're going to have to do, let's face it, uh, you're going to have to delete all your shape keys, which is annoying. So it's best to apply it first. Um, right here, I've got my X mirror switched on because we don't have our mirror modifier switched on anymore. Seems we're using shape keys and we've finished it pretty much. Um, I'm using the thumb tool. You can use the grab tool, you can use any tool you want. Um, but the thumb tool is good for this because, unlike the grab tool, which sort of just like any vertices you've got under your influence, you grab it and it just moves them. With this, you get a bit more control. So, for example, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my wire on so you can see what I'm doing. These vertices here, I'm going to move them together. But with the thumb tool you can sort of you can move it around like that. So do I want it to look angry or do I want it to look worried? Um I'm gonna go for an angry look actually. So what you do at this point is you get a mirror, then you look at yourself in your mirror, which you probably do a lot anyway. And then you would work on well, you'd look at how your face deforms. Cause I mean everyone's face looks different. 
but let's face it, the general anatomy of the human structure is the same for everyone when it comes down to the muscles and where they like connected and stuff. So looking in the mirror, I'm not looking in the mirror. But you should. You wanna check how this deforms. And if you like you usually get a little crease. So I want a little crease. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna go into edit mode. Um, luckily, always check this, sometimes the X mirror doesn't work, but luckily it does. So because the X mirror works, I'm going to use that. If the X mirror didn't work on the other hand, well, there's something you can do. And that something is, if you want to move it along the Z axis, then it's easy. You hit G, then you hit Z. G is move, Z is move along the X axis, obviously. Um, but if you wanted to move it along the x-axis, so that's this way, then you're going to have to hit S to scale, S and X. And that sort of gives the same effect as mirroring it. So that looks like a good sort of frown. You have to move these as well. In you go. Um, this crunches together and this if you notice when you frown it goes out along the y axis a bit this crumples up shit along the y axis and don't worry if it looks really jagged here because your subsafe will take care of that if you got one if you don't I suggest you apply one okay so that looks pretty angry um, also, don't fall into the trap of just editing what you see or what you think is applied because if you notice going into a frown you've got a lot of muscles. So you've got these muscles here, your obvious ones. And also if you notice, the skin gets stretched around your whole sort of skull. So everything here that would move a bit as well. It's really subtle, but it does add to realism. And you kind of snarl a little as well. What does a snarl look like? Well, actually, I'm going to go back into my sculpt tool here and zoom out so I get wider influence. Down that goes, and you know it's kind of scrunch up. Uh, see how that looks with a subset on. Mm, switch it on. That looks quite frowny. But still, I'm not happy with it. It needs to be more exaggerated. Remember, when you're doing shape keys, do everything exaggerated. All your. All your emotions have to be maximum because if you want it subtle, you just apply it subtly. But if you want it to be really exaggerated, and all you modelled was a subtle shape key for that, then you're going to have to make another shape key, or even worse, you're going to have to edit your shape key, which means that any animations you did previously using that shape key are going to be even more, are going to be less subtle than you wanted them to be. So that's not good. Mmm, I don't know. <sighs> and the way you exaggerate it, it's well, you just move everything more than you would. Move it out as well, I think. Make it more sort of brow like. And angry and primordial. So. Walked in on you playing Xbox when you were supposed to be doing work, and that's why you didn't call her. That sort of look. Does it work? Let's find out. Hmm. 
I think that would be okay. The reason I'm not going to pull this down as you would for a normal frown is because what you can do later is you can add two more shape keys. You can add a shape key where these go up and you can add a shape key where these go down. And I'll show you that. In fact, I'll show you that now. Um, brow up. So set that to one. Raised eyebrows. So this didn't make it look worried. Pull these up. Turn my thingy off. Thingy, 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 die. So there we go. And that's with this set to one. Okay. So what this means is you can mix and match shape keys, which is really useful. And when you mix and match shape keys, you get this sort of effect. You get a lot more control. So that's good for when you're doing lip syncing, for example. If you want to do an O, you only have to make one um, shape key to sort of like make your lips rounder. And then if you want to turn that into, I don't know, a U, and you just make the cheeks go in a little bit. And you can, but you can also use the cheeks going in a little bit for something else like a P or whatever it is. So it means less shape keys, more control. And I'll show you that. So you can go from looking worried to looking angry. Down you go. To looking. I don't know what this is going to be. But it's an expression. It's an expression that a human face can make. That's what this is all about. Looking plain amused. Yeah. Another thing, if you've got hair, you're going to have to make sure that your hair's okay because sometimes your hair screws up when you're editing. Luckily, it hasn't this time. Which is pretty rare. But yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.